Hello, my name is Shadow Templar 591 and I'm back doing a what is video on Warframe. For those who don't know, my what is Shut up, Ordis. I'm trying to do something. My what is videos are beginner's guides uh, where I go through the full premise of a game. I'm doing it, as you can see, on Warframe. I go over who the game is made by, what kind of game it is, story, gameplay, aesthetics, so on and so forth, price, and then my final thoughts. So this video is going to be longer than most of my others just because there are a lot of different mechanics in Warframe. I'm going to try not to tell my opinion just to try to keep this video condensed on most of them. Also I'm going to split this up into a gameplay and a story section just because the story section has a bunch of spoilers in it. So I can keep at least part of this spoiler free and then We'll go into the spoils, then we'll come back out at the, when I actually show the game, a lot of the gameplay in, in game instead of from the ship, because I'm going to show the mechanics from the ship. I'm going to go to the story, then I'm going to actually play a mission, show you guys how it all works and comes together in a mission, and then I'll end the video. So this game is made by DE Studios. They've made the Darkness 1 and 2, and they worked on the Bioshock 2 multiplayer. Those are the three things I know they worked on. They might have worked on some of other things. Uh, the story of this gameplay, the story of this gameplay, the story of Warframe without giving any spoilers is basically space ninjas with a space mom is the easiest way I can put it. Simplest without spoiling it. Gameplay, this is a third person team-oriented FPS looter shooter. So, kind of think of Borderlands, games like that as the games that first come to mind to me. Warcraft, eh, World of Warcraft in the sense of being loot-driven. Controls for the most part are good. Um, WASD to move, but they decided to, so to sprint, you have to hit, hit shift, and then to slide, you have to use V, so that's a really awkward position for your hands. Um, I personally have got used to doing it, so but I'll probably get couple copper tunnel from doing it. But if it's a really weird section for the controls, um, and especially since you're going to be using that shift and V a lot just to get momentum, because that's a big part of this game, and I'll show more of that later. Music is great. I like the music. And then the price, this is actually a free-to-play game, and I'll go more through that later on as well when we get to the marketplace on this, and kind of give you how how it works and maybe set my thoughts on it. So first off, we'll start with the navigation system. So navigation system, first it shows you alerts, basically they're timed missions, as you can see, they give you certain rewards, sometimes blueprints, sometimes other resources, sometimes just straight up work cash the called credits uh, we'll go over i'll also go more of the different monetary puzzles not puzzles monetary way um oh my god monetary i guess cash uh, i i'm i'm <laughs> can't find the word but you guys know what i mean um different ways you can buy stuff in this game and how you do that uh, when we get to the market as well um, so that's that We'll go over here to the right. This is the news. It's what it sounds like. It gives you updates on the hot fixes, stuff that's coming up. If they, the every other week, I believe, D does uh, a dev stream. So they'll, this uh, will come up here saying when it's going to be, who's going to be on it, what they'll probably talk about, so on and so forth. Over here, uh, I didn't actually, and I didn't mention this at the top either, Warframe is mostly a PvE game and, and not a PvP game. This is this is where you'll find all the PvP stuff. Um, these three are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, Southland Capture is basically just Southland, 
that's a flan flag. Um, capture the flag, just Warframe kind of skinned and themed. And then Lunao, I'll actually show that a little later on. Uh, and then there's certain rewards, and daily, you have daily kind of missions you can do to get credit, not credits, but I guess favor would be the best way of putting it. Prestige with these with these missions, with these PvE missions, and there's special mods for that that don't affect the PvE stuff, so that's kind of cool. And then you can, there's certain skins and aesthetics and stuff you can buy too with the PvP stuff as well. So here we got over here is a market. Um, the market is where if you see all these bobbleheads around, that's where I bought up most of these bob. Actually, I think all the bobbleheads. And here you can buy you can buy Warframes, you can buy Warframe skins, you can buy skins for just about everything. If you can think of it, you can basically buy in Warframe, whether it's straight up just buying weapons, which you can do. So here's, here's, and I'm glad I clicked it. So you can either, I can either buy this weapon up straight up for 225 plat, which is another currency in the game. Um, plant is used to buy basically cosmetics and weapons um, from the market and then you can buy other things like prime parts mods and I believe that's it right now there might be some other things you can buy from the in-game trading system from other players with plat plat can be got in one or two ways you can either get it through trading stuff so if i have a, a weapon or weapon weapon part you want like a prime weapon part i can trade it for you and then i'll get the plat um i can also i can also get it by just buying money straight up from the site or sometimes if you buy certain merch it'll come with plat also if you go to they have uh like tenno convention it's called TennoCon. um you get you'll get some plat for going that <clears throat> once again for supporting them I don't have any problem with that I mean it, it, to me most of the people and I'm one of them who are going to either go to those things or buy that stuff is always it, that's kind of not gonna the plat is kind of just a little extra for us uh, and that's really it the and I almost forgot the most important thing about <clears throat> that you can use with plat so if you see next to it says Za Primer, which just means it's like a shotgun or a weapon, it's gonna you get and I'll go through the different types of weapons you get when we get to the arsenal and the ship. But here's the important thing. It says zero open slots. So you need slots, you have weapon slots and you have warframe slots. And you need and the only way to get more slots is to use plat. For weapon slots and this is for all types of weapons. So that means sword, that means melee weapons, secondary weapons, primary weapons. You get, you pay 12, I believe it's either 12, I think it's 12 plat for two slots. And then I believe it's 20 or 25 plat for one Warframe slot. And that's how you get, and you'll actually start off when you make a new account, you'll start off with plat that you can't actually trade or buy stuff with. I don't know why it's coming up there. And then network not responding um, but here's here's this and here's the important thing with that you can't trade that so and that's just to stop people from keep making a new accounts trading into like their main account and then have it getting plat, plat artificially so that's what that's for and I would say if you when you make a new account save it up save your plat up and just use it for weapon slots and stuff like and Warframe because that's going to be the most important thing. More weapons and, and Warframes you have, the more options you have to beat a mission. And we'll go, I'll go into Warframes and, and weapon when we do get to the arsenal part. But that's plat at least. And then credits, I didn't talk really a lot about credits, but credits are mostly used for upgrading mods, Buying blueprints. 
Thanks, Space Mom. Um, that's us. That's Space Mom, for those who don't know. So you can use it to buy uh, blueprints to upgrade mods. You also use them to actually finally complete making, actually starting the process of actually making the weapon from the blueprint as well as what you use credits for. I believe those are the same three main things for credits. If I think of anything else, I'll let you guys know. Uh, so that's basically, and then this is a bundle, they're just skins, as you can, it says, for Ash, she's a Warframe. Once we get to the Austin, I'll show you more Warframes, and then that you can just buy with straight play. So that's, that's really the market. You do have um, what's called Prime Accesses, for which uh, basically when a new Prime Warframe comes out, you can go to DV's website and pay money to basically unlock that Warframe. You'll automatically get that Warframe that uh, whatever other Prime weapons come with that we we Warframe, usually two Prime weapons come with that. And then some scans and a bunch of plat. So that's that, and that's the market. So now we're going to go over here to the Codex. The Codex, so you can see it shows quests, which until fairly recently have been, I don't want to say bland, but they've mostly been ways of using to unlock a Warframe um, for the newer Warframes to unlock them. So that way you, it's not just about grinding. It kind of gives you not only a story, but it kind of almost guarantees you're going to get the parts for that Warframe. They were also used to introduce mechanics, which they still are. But now, especially with the last two, The War Within and The Second Dream, which, as you can see, this little Laurel thing has meant I've completed those quests as, as long as, as well with the completed, have been very much more story-oriented and story-driven. Right now, the only quest you can restart is The War Within. I'm not going to do that because, A, that's the newest quest, and B, there's a whole crap ton of spoilers in it so and I don't have as you can see I don't have a quest unlock that is actually the quest for beginners um, so when you first start up you'll get you whoever whenever you start a new account with Warframe you'll play through that quest quest it gives you a lot of the fundamentals but there's a lot it doesn't tell you I'll kind of go into more of that when we get to mods and modding and how that works into Warframes and weapons later on but for those who have, who actually already had accounts and asked us basically if we wanted to play, I said no. They are talking about letting people replay that or play that and along with the other quests. So that way, but without having to lose any of the functions of the ship. So, should be interesting. Now, here's another part. This is called the, as you can see, the universe. And this is basically just gives you for some of the enemies, it just kind of gives you what they're weak against, what they're good against, the drops, and where you can find them. The problem is, with a lot of this is, a lot of them don't get the drops, and the and you can't, you don't, I don't exactly know what this means number-wise. Like, I know, obviously, I can see this is fire. So I can see it's really, this guy is really good against fire, but I don't know, plus, does that mean he's... Is that 25%? Is that 50%? Is that only 5%? It doesn't give me an indication of that. Uh, and because of that, and to be honest, this really, at least for the enemies in the Warframes, it's a nice idea, but to be honest, a lot of that I'm just going to go to a wiki to find. Uh, so I think that's really something that really could be done better for Warframe. I believe this, yeah. So this tells us about the same. This gives us, at least for the pets, it gives us a little description, at least for the uh, Kubaros, which are basically space dogs. It gives us a little description. But unless it's a main enemy, it doesn't, which I get, I get why, but it's kind of a letdown. Uh, don't, I don't know if it does for the weapons. Okay, so the weapons, it gives, it gives us stats, but once again, 
we'll probably you you're just probably going to watch the a YouTuber or someone who's going to if you're really into min maxing stuff and they're going to show you builds and how to basically play every play to every weapon's strengths or weaknesses which personally is what I do uh I do I have heard from what I've been seeing there are have have been a couple of weapons where it hasn't been so linear you've kind of got a couple more options so I hope that's the direction they're going with the weapons I would really like that it seems really cool and then objects it's what it looks like objects that you find in the game nothing home to write about except these the cure I don't know if those are still in the game, but those will give you some, if you see those, uh, and I'll show you how to scan stuff in the game with the codex, you can actually, they'll give you a little lore, as long, as well as these Cephalon fragments, these will give you some lore on planets, so I think that's really cool. If they start doing stuff like that with objects, that's going to be really cool as well, little lore bits, really reminds me of Dark Souls and Demon Souls and games like that. They added this art gallery, which I think is really cool that I never noticed before. So I don't even know how to unlock it, but it looks really cool. So good job. And then we've got relics and arcanes. Relics and arcanes are basically they're higher tier missions. Relics are basically how you get your prime weapons and prime parts. I'll go into prime weapons and prime parts when we get to the arsenal. And now canes are basically, you do what are called trials. They are really hard missions that are team based and you basically then get an arcane as a reward. It gives a certain stat and you put it on a cosmetic. You can take it off that cosmetic and I'll show you why when we go to the syndicates. And then I think this just talks about, and then this just shows you a mod collection. So. Which I don't know why you would go here when you could just go to where you where you can upgrade mods, but that's that's neither here nor there. And here's where I feel like this is the biggest letdown of the game is this training section because it's all it's all text, and that's great. I mean, it's definitely better than nothing, but I really, in the grand scheme of things, and you guys can pauses to read this there's a lot of things that this just doesn't tell you that you're gonna want to know that you're just you know what you're just gonna go to watch a youtube and see how it works so i'm gonna i'm gonna let you at least modding and this is one of the things that actually beginning quest doesn't go over and i don't know why it doesn't very if at all very well so i'm gonna go over it so that's one of the major things I have a problem with this is a lot of the porting system it doesn't tell you how to do it so I'll let you know how to do it and then this goes over the different mission types I won't scroll through you can read them you can kind of pretty much each one kind of the pictures speak for themselves I will open up the trials so that you guys can Read that if you can pause and read that if you want to. I think Lunaro is here as well. Yep. And I'll pause and I'll open that. And you guys, if you can, if you want to, can pause and read that as well. But I'm going to go on because this is going to be a long video. So I don't know why that keeps coming up. So these are the syndicates. As you can imagine, they're basically sections where you get prestige or however you want to put it through them they give you certain much like all the factions systems and syndicate systems in the game certain factions like each other and for shit why thank you certain factions hate each other and this is basically shows that so allied means if i do a mission and i have one of their, they're called sigiled, but it's their little sign on my Warframe. There, I'll get points toward them, not only the Arbiters of Hexus, but also Cephalon Suda. But when I do that, I'll lose points if I have any towards the Pyrian Sequence and Red Veil. Vale. And each... These will show you the path. 
And then, so these are the little, you just need these little, they're called sigils on your Warframe, and I'll show you how you put those on. And that's how you get, you get prestige toward that faction. You can only, and there are specific missions for them as well. Uh, you can only get fi about 15,000 prestige every day for them outside of doing the specific missions that those factions want you to do. And uh, when we actually go to select a mission in the navigation system, I'll show you guys that as well. You get certain things, so you get mods. My, my big thing is you get mods that kind of help older weapons and weapons that kind of may have not stood the test of time. Little boosts that do little things. Uh, you also get... I guess you could call them, they're actually called augments, augment mods to your, to different warframe abilities, uh, and not everyone, every different faction has a different set of weapons and f weapon mods and weapon augment mods and warframe wa augment mods that they're capable of getting, as well as weapons, primary, melee, and secondary weapons, so this is secondary, this is primary, this is melee. They also have a signed on, which is kind of like a little cape thing you can get, which is kind of cool. And these are also how you get, if you want an arcane that you got, say, on your Telesan Adana, but you bought one from the market and you want to take it off, this is, you buy this and it'll take it off and you put it on the new one. So these are factions. Uh, if you want to pause, you can, you can read these uh, descriptions as well. They pretty much sum up the factions but I'm going to move on as like before okay so that's the front of the ship we're gonna go a little back so this is a scanner you can turn it on and off but I, I like to have it on just because it kind of gives you a little lore now there is a little lore in it it also kind of makes the world feel a little alive as you're in floating around the galaxy and then, this is the most important part of the ship, so I will go, f like above, right to left. So, mods. So, this is how modding works. You select the mod, you want the mod. So, let's say we want adhesive blast. We want to mod that. So, start fusioning. And then, you click the plus. So, now it shows us how much credits we need to improve to upgrade this how much what's called endo and that is dropped that is you can get that in an alert as you might have seen going back when we first started the mission there was actually alert for the endo enemies drop it and you can get it as rewards as well it so it shows us okay if we upgrade this once it's gonna go it's this percentage of of grenade sticking surface goes from 17 to 33 percent and it's going to go the polarity or the amount of energy it takes to put on a weapon is going to go from four to five and the reason that's important is because when you upgrade your weapons and war and warframes in warframe you actually Upgrading them doesn't actually increase any stats. It really doesn't increase their base stats. Mods are how you increase those base stats and augment them to different kind of builds. If you probably read the, if you paused and read those different sections that I showed you in the training of the codex, it doesn't say anything like that. It doesn't tell you. So good luck with that. So that's why I wanted to bring this up and come here because it doesn't show you and we'll actually you'll see that five and that polarity will actually go to and as you can see it, it changes so it shows you here and it actually shows you on the mod itself which I didn't notice so that's really good and then that V that's a polarity I'll go I'll go into that and then as you saw that little dot came up it turned from like gray to blue so that means we we can upgrade this five times before it hits max you know go to nine and then it'll still be a hundred percent chance it gives us the credit it gives us how much endo and then we can do that so i won't do that because i have no uh no really use for that mod so far 
and right on cue. So that that <laughs> that alert had both credits and endo. So there you go. Another way you can get endo is I attend sculptures, scu sculptures, sculptures, which you can get in. You can either find them around or you can actually get them in missions. Uh, there's the guaranteed missions once a week you can play to get them. So basically, so this statue as it is, is 375 endo. So I can go somewhere and give it to uh, Maru and Maru's Bazaar and she will give me 375 endo. But if I put these, what are called cyan, I attend star crystals in this sculpture it actually increase how much endos it it is worth and then I can actually give it back to her for even and get more endo so that's another way you can actually get endo so that's the mods that's the mining system here's what are called pets uh, basically you need to get a pet you actually I think this says Kubo braiding, but it's almost the same for ca ca Kavat braiding, which is basically space cats. Uh, you need an egg, you need an incubator core, you need to have an open slot, and you need to have no active pets. The egg, the egg you can get actually by destroying Kubo dens on Earth, and they have a chance to drop. You can actually just buy them straight up in the market. And then for the incubator core, you can either, I think you can actually, you can either buy it straight up with plat, just like the egg, or you can buy the blueprint and then find the materials for that. The slot under, you can only get by buying plat. Um, so that's how that works. I'll actually show you, I'll actually take one of my Cooper out of stasis to kind of show you more of that so and, if, and I didn't actually show this but you can actually preview which which Kubo you want to take out so that way you don't take out the wrong one which is I think really cool so how Kubo's and Kavats work is you're technically bringing them back to life they're technically dead um, so because of that their DNA integrity disintegrates after so many days uh, once it goes to zero they do die uh, until you get actually an upgrade for this the pet system which will make it so once it gets to a certain percentage they actually automatically go into stasis and stasis is the only way without applying DNA stabilizing which you can see that you can keep them from dying you can buy, once again, you can buy the blueprint in the market or you can buy them straight up. The way loyalty works is it, every time uh, uh, your Kuburo dies in battle, the loyalty will go down. You can't interact with them three times a day, as you see, to bring that back up. You can also learn about them. So same thing that was in the Codex. And then you can consign, which basically means if you have a Kuboro but you don't want it or it's an extra one, you can consign it 25, uh, 25,000 credit and basically the Space Mom or Lotus takes it and then you don't, you don't, it doesn't take up the slot. That way you don't have to keep buying slot for Kuboro you don't want anymore. And then you can actually scan blueprints for these Kubos to either sell or to combine with other Kubos to see what kind of different breeds, different color codes, different body types, different actually types of Kubos. There's a couple different types if you want to go back and look at that codex page. And I want to go back and show them just because once again trying to keep this as short as possible and it shows the breeding and then shows a stasis so I can't use this Kubero actually and this is actually new I didn't know about this uh, for another 20 30 minutes about but I can rush it for 10,000 so that's really cool for 10,000 credits which is really nice also they actually now the Kubros can actually walk around the ship with you before they couldn't so that's really neat but I'm gonna put my little buddy here Bella back in stasis just so I don't forget yes and that basically just in that little message if you pause it just tells you 
everything I just told you. And he's going to go back in stasis, and then the egg will pop up. Cool. And then these are sentinels over here, but... So here's finally the arsenal. The arsenal is where you do, where you select your warframe, you select your weapon, whether it's a warframe primary weapon that can be, as you can see, I have a rifle, but they have shotguns, they have sniper rifles, they have just weird weapons, bows, just about everything and anything you can think of they they can they have in this game and then you can just buy weapons straight up from here as well just like you could in the market warframes come up in different shapes and sizes you've got your stealthy ones like loki you've got your more tinky ones like rhino and then you've and once again you can just buy the warframes here as well just and you can buy it as well as the market now you might be asking, okay, Shadow, what's the difference between a regular Warframe and a Prime Warframe? So a Prime Warframe is not only harder to get, you can, you, the only way you can get the Prime parts for Warframe is with those relics. Not only that, but to the Warframes, the Prime Warframes actually have better stats, whether it's better shields, better health, better armor, more power, which just means they can use their abilities more. And you can actually see all those stats for at least Loki Prime in the bottom right. So this is not only this is where you select your weapons, you also select your companion. So if I still had Bella out of stasis, I could select uh, her. Obviously, I just put her back in stasis, so I can. And then I select the weapon I want. So I can either use the weapon that comes with Helios. Or I can use a different one, like the one that comes with Warm Prime, and I can put that in. Uh, primed Companions, just like Primed... Primed Companions... Uh, I lost my trade of thought there. Uh, primed Companions follow those same line as Primed Weapons and Prime Warframes. They're, they just got, they've got better stats, weapons, and the actual... Prime Pod Sentinels come in to do two different things. They have, as you saw, the actual Sentinel and the little weapon. And each one of them does different things. Helios actually will scan stuff automatically for you. I'll show that once we go to select the mission for the navigation. But you can also, if I had, uh, I can choose whether or not to have this holstered. If I had a skin, I could equip the skin or buy one here for my soma uh, i can change the colors so warframe is all about fashion fashion warframe just it's really fashion frame in a lot of ways decking out your ship decking out your warframe decking out just about anything uh you can also see the different abilities for the warframes i think that's because it tells you and it actually tells you the ability, a passive ability for the Warframes, and then all of them have them as as of yet, but they are adding these, adding them more and more every day. And now we're going to get... What is, I'm trying to do something here, man. So, and here's where the modding section really comes comes into play. Here's where we're going to try to we're going to pull everything together, guys. So, as you see, certain one of these mods, so this mod has a green next to it, and this one has a white. And you might say, well, why is that? Well, that's because, so if I take this mod off, no, I want to just, can I just remove this? There we go, okay. I don't know why it wasn't letting me. So if you, if I take these two mods off, you, you'll notice something really quick. This mod has, this mod has that little D like this slot does. So when I put that there, what that basically is saying, since they have the same icon, it actually reduces the cost of that mod by health, by half. Now if I just put it here, it has a blue icon, the, not the blue, but the, white icon which means it doesn't have it doesn't have that slot doesn't have any icon in it so it just it's a normal cost 
But if I put, say, this dash one where that D one is, it turns red. And that's just saying, and what that means is, hey, you have two different looking icons, so that to, you can have that on, that mod still, but it's going to cost more than if it just was nothing there, or if you had the correct one. So that's all that means. Once again, that's a fundamental thing that this game doesn't show, it doesn't tell you, and I don't know why. So two things with, two other things with Warframes that, once again, they don't tell you, I don't know why. You can do what's called potatoing in the community. What that means is most Warframes and weapons max out 30. Actually, all they all do. And for each level, you get one power. But when you potato it, or they're called catalysts and, and actually in the game, but I'm going to use the term potato because I think it sounds cooler. When you do that, that actually doubles the amount of power that the that the weapon in have to 60 so more power more ability to do mod slots another thing you can do is what's called forming forming a weapon and what that means is you change you can either actually change the slot so if i want this to be a dash one now i can change that or if i want it to be nothing or i can change one that has nothing on to one of the different the different symbols the thing when, when you do that is, then that brings the weapon down to zero again, and you have to re-level it up. Now, when you do it, when you level up the first time, your that level, those points go to a mastery rank, and certain weapons, and actually now certain mods, are, can only be used if you hit a certain mastery rank. The, the reason I bring this up now is when you do that a second time, you don't get the points again. Once you mastery the weapon once, forming again doesn't give you those points towards the mastery rank again, unfortunately. I know why they would do that because then people would just buy a bunch of throwaway weapons, keep forming them, and then just to kind of get to the weapons they want. So they kind of start around that. And then basically, the configure me just means you have three different slots you can do to have three different builds. So if I want to have one that's energy focused, I can. One that's about my abilities lasting longer, I can. Or a third one about my abilities being having more damaged, I can. Before those used to be for the different factions, um, but with power creep, really it doesn't, that's not so much of a factor anymore because the different factions do have different, uh, how can I put this, armor and armor types as we saw in the codex. And I'll go through the factions, they are different than the syndicate. So I'll go through that once again when we go back to the navigation and kind of select the mission, I will go through that as well. So that is, that is modding. This, as you can see, there's two mod slots. There's one I have unlocked. That's for, you need a specific uh, item called an excess adapter to unlock that. And that's basically for a support slot. And then every Warframe starts automatically, I'm pretty sure, with uh, what's called uh, OR slot. So basically... Every every Warframe, so this one is every Warframe will regenerate 0.6 power, and that, and the more Warframes there are on the mission, the higher that number goes. So that's one of them. Another one is everyone gets more health, so will regenerate health. Um, I believe there's another one that actually works against degrading enemy shields, so there's a bunch of different ones for that. But that's how the arsenal works, how... The modding works, how buying your cool little, um, and equipping your cool little skins work. And then you have your gear, your codex scanners, your Cincinnati scanner, which that's another way you can get lore. There's, there's certain enemies that if you use this scanner with, they'll pop up and they'll, they'll kind of tell you how to give you, if you do it enough times, give you a little lore on that enemy. Glyphs are pretty much Warframe version of sprays from Overwatch, and then 
there's other things. Uh, there's basically this will let you have a little buddy to help you, an AI buddy doing a mission. These are for unlocking certain, they're called vaults and derelict missions. I'll go over those when we go to the navigation, but those have certain mods in them. So, and then traps and then the scanner. So, that's that. And then you can do different emotes. Okay. And then you can actually do Thank you. And then you can do different little emotes in this game and choose which ones you want to have equipped. Here's a sentinel. We talked about that. And here is a foundry. And there's a key part of this game. So if you don't buy, upright buy your weapons, you're going to spend spending a lot of time here. So how this works is, say I want the bright and prime. I already have it, but say I want to make it. So I have to get, I have to get a Brandon Prime barrel, a stock, a receiver. I need the blueprint as well, and then I need any other resource. So this requires orc and cells to make this. It, and then once I make it, it'll call 15,000 credits, and it'll take 12 hours. Weapons aren't too bad, but let's see here. And so, but if I want to say a prime warframe, that's a little, that's a little more grinding. So how that works is I need the three different parts and the blueprint, just like for a weapon. But while for the blueprints, for the parts for weapons, I don't need to make for warframes, I do. And those all cost 12 hours. And then once I have those completed, then I can make the warframe for, which will complete in, in another 72 hours. So this game really is based on, do you have more time or do you have more money? And depending on how you add, how you answer that question is how you're going to, you're either going to be spending a lot of time in the market or you're going to be spending a lot of time in the foundry or in the trade chat or at the trade node. Uh, I'll go over the different chats soon enough too before we get to the spoilers for the story. So that is how uh, that is how forming not forming how making warframes and weapons work in in warframe and just about any every item follows follows that dichotomy of either the you just get the parts and make the actual item or you have to get the parts and make the parts for the item and then the item itself a little grindy but it is a free to play game so there is going to be some grind there you can also make so like this is a, a alternate helmet for Ivara or Ivara and you can make those as well uh, let's see yeah, and then you also make those catalysts I was talking about, or potatoes. And that's about, I think that's it for this that I really wanted to show. Yeah. So that's that. So that's, and then there's one more important system we gotta go over, and then we're gonna get into spoilers, and that is the Void Relic system. So how this works is, there will be specific void where would be called void fusions or pop up fissions in certain uh, maps and certain nodes in the map. And I'll show you once again when we go back to the navigation. I'll show you that. And how that goes is everyone brings a relic to that kind of mission. There's different tiers, as as you can see, and they all have different items you can get and within the different, not only tiers, but the actually different relics. Uh, the further to the right are the better, are the more rare relics and the more rare items. So, how this works is, say I want, say I want the Soma uh, blueprint, prime blueprint. So, I equip, I bring this relic, I equipped it to my, my Warframe to my loadout, 
grab it, take it with me, and and then whoever. So say someone has two other relics, and I have three other people because in a group you have four. And say they bring all relics, and they and they have different items on them. They don't. You don't actually all have to need to have the same type of relic. So what will happen is. There's a certain percentage of one of these of out of these items, one of these showing up. So say the so say the Mag Prime blueprint shows up. So for me that'll show up. Then for someone else, another item will show up, and so on and so forth. For each depending on the relic they they brought to that to that mission tier. So what'll happen at the end? We'll actually get to choose. So say I, I say instead of getting the soma, like I said, the soma blueprint, prime blueprint, I get the mag prime blueprint. And I'm like crap! I already got that. I don't want that. But I see another another one of the rewards that someone that pops up is an item or a blueprint that I don't have. I can actually choose that even though I didn't bring that relic and get that as my reward, which is really great because it really, it helps with the grind, but at the same time, it doesn't mean it makes the the game last grinding. So I love that. And another thing they do is uh, during those missions, I can find what are called void traces and I can use those to work with the stats to make it so that the more rarer items have a bigger chance of dropping than they normally would. And I get those void traces in the same in the same missions. Now I don't have a lot, so what I can do is I can just stop one of those missions, go there, get the void traces and not actually do the open the fissure or close it, and I'll still get the void traces and be able to move on. So that's a really great system. I like it. Uh, it's compared to the last system, which I won't bother you with because it doesn't matter. So we are going into spoiled territory. But before I do that, I want to show the different channel talks. So you have the squad. You have your clan. If you're in a clan, I am. You can see it. The region, which is a crapshoot. The recruiting, which is like it sounds, uh, it's easy recruiting as it says for squads or clans, and then the trade channel, which you can either trade through the trade channel, or as it also says, you can trade at dojos and Maru's Bazaar. Uh, dojos are basically clans, clan hangouts, basically, or what they are, and there's certain warframe, prime, warframe pots and items and weapons that you can only get at a clan but most clans are looking for people anyway so that's how you get there and kind of like just like on your ship you need certain resources you need certain resources to make those uh to get to be able to research those different uh, warframe weapons and parts and stuff and everyone in the clan contributes to it and then the more people in the clan the higher the resource count so as long as there's not a lot of dead radar around there it's not too hard to get the weapons and resources so I will actually I'm going to change that so we don't see a bunch of that and we're going to so so I should so spoilers coming up we are going I'm going to walk in there this is your warning you have been warned spoilers going forward so let's do this so you may be wondering who this is so this is what they call a tenor and I'm even going to sum up the story as best that I can even more than I'm going to expand on the story more than I did in the beginning, but it's still going to be a summarization because it's still a lot we don't know. So basically, the story goes back way back, way, way, way back. There were three factions. And if, if this sounds familiar, it is. So you Warhammer and Starcraft and... Alien Predator friends are gonna find very big similarities in this story. So there's three different factions. All humanoids, no aliens. One called the Orican. They're really high tech, and they make two other factions. 
called the Gunia and the Corpus. What happens is the Gunia are basically they're kind of just the grunts. They do all the heavy work, all the all kind of stuff like that. And then you have the Corpus. They're kind of they're the more intellectual guys. Um, they're within a certain conspine they're more goal oriented having their own kind of goals and kind of making so that they can give so then why that is important is because they actually help the orc and get some of their technology and that's kind of what can keep continues the Orkins power because then they pass that down to the Grenier who then build the stuff for the corpus to make for them to give to the Orkins so and I'm going to be honest, this is how I understand it. I could be totally, totally off with the story, but this is kind of how I'm understanding it. So from there, so what eventually happened, though, is some of the corporates actually got really smart and started to work against the Orkin. And that faction split up to call what the Sentinels. And the, the, reason, the reason that becomes a problem is the Sentinels... The Orkins rely on, on technology, but what the Sentinels are able to do is they're able to co-opt technology and actually adapt to it. So they started to use the Orkins' own weapons against them. So the reason that is important because the Orkins were like, crap, what do we do? So what they did is they made a, bio, a biological race called the Infested. At first, they didn't have, they kind of just, the problem with that is the Orkins couldn't control them, and they kind of just, eventually, they were starting to do their own little thing, each infested, I guess, hive. I, if you're seeing similarities between StarCraft, I don't blame you, um, and the Zerg, the or infested in the Zerg, they then decided to come together and become, have a high mind mentality. We don't know the leader of the infested if there is such um but there started to become a hierarchy so then the infested just kind of started doing their own thing so that became a problem but eventually on a ship uh, some orkins came across these kids called tenno and this is a focus system but it's kind of being phased out called Tenno, who could do what's called transference with Warframes, which like Loki. And what that means is... Oh, no, that's not the right button. This is what transference means. They have a psychic connection to the Warframes. So they actually... So when you... You actually... Controlling... So these guys control the Warframes who go into battle. The reason that's important is because that those were... They were the actually the only ones who could control their warframes because the warframes actually do kind of have personalities, but they more embody certain kind of raw emotions, and the Tenno were able to kind of harness those emotions and control the warframe. And the reason that's important is because the Sentinels couldn't turn the warframes against the Orkans to to actually attack the Orkans, actually. I take that back. Eventually, what happened is the Warframes turned against the Orkans, killed them all, and then the uh, now Space Mom was try was commanded to basically kill the Tenno, stop the Warframes, stop the whole thing because it it had gone awry. But one of the the things about what the Orkans can do right on cue, Space Mom, is they can actually go into the fold of space and time called the Void. The problem is, when you do that, it, it leaves you infertile. So then what happened is, the Lotus, going by a different name back then, kind of took on a motherly persona, and instead of killing the Warframes, put them in status, and that's basically where the beginning of the game starts off, and then you're coming out of status and going forward, so... But the, the, and this is another thing that I forgot to mention, the, the Orkin, not the Orkin, but the Corpus and the Guinea on their own can't go through the void. They need, they need help. They, they're not able to bend that space and time where the Orkin actually exists. So that's 
that's the story of Warframe up to this part. Um, for the, that's a major part. There's some stuff with the war within that I didn't touch on, and I, that's because we don't know in the larger story where they're going with it right now, so we'll see where that's going. But the focus system is kind of getting phased out, so don't worry about that too much. But just like everything else in this game, and this is why I brought it up, you can customize it with sigils and stuff. And I didn't actually show you how to put sigils on your Warframe, but it's the same thing for your channel. So let me see where it is. Uh, sigil. So it'll just be in the appearance. There'll be something called a sigil, and then you'll just pick the one you want. I got that sigil because it looks cool and whatnot. Because I like it. So that is. Tenno. You can actually do that transference in battle. Um, I do it once in a while, but it's uh, it's mostly used to get what I call Kuva, and that's about it. And that's basically just to get these to reroll for these special high level mods called Riven mods, but that system is kind of new, so I don't really want to go into that too much, but you can if you want to look it up more. Okay guys, we're back, no more spoilers, so we're gonna select a mission, and then we'll be pretty much done. Um, I'll go over to the different kind of mission types, where you can get stuff, and then we will, uh, we'll end this. So, mission types. On the left, you have quests, this is my pending quest, I haven't beat it. You have alerts, and you can see what those are. So. Maru's Bazaar, that's the mission you'll go, if you click this, you go there, you will, she'll give you the mission for the Ayatan Sculpture, that is actually Maru's Bazaar, I'll show you, I'll actually show that, um, is actually where the, you actually trade, if you don't want to do trading through the chat, is actually where you do that at, so let's find Earth. So, oh yeah, and all the planets are based on the solar system. So you have, you have Earth, you have the Moon, you have other places as well. So Maru's Bazaar, you go there, you can trade with people, and you can get that that Titan sculpture mission to do that. If you don't want to trade through the trade chat, you can also go to the dojo, which I'll show is usually in the bottom left here. You can zoom out more. I don't want to because there's a certain tile set that's kind of spoily, so I don't want to spoil anybody. So that's that. Um, you have what I call the invasions. The, what they sound like. Basically, one of the factions invading a different place. So right now, the corporates are invading a Grineo planet. I can decide to support one of them. If I do it three times, I'll get three Detron Injections if I support the Ganea. If I do it for the Corpus, I get three Feldron. And I can do that every time I do it three times, I'll get that reward again so I can do it multiple times. Here are the Syndicate missions you can get. Here you can see the rewards. The higher the mission, the higher the rewards. Also, if you have the little sigil like I do for uh, Arbiters, uh, the Arbiters or that faction, whatever they may be, that actually, that reward will actually get increased. This is your vision missions that you can see. So there's that, and then here are your kind of sortie missions are also, so there's no, there's no one end game, there's multiple different kind of sets of end game, and you can see the different rewards you can get, basically as long as you beat these three types of missions before that time, you'll get one of these rewards. So there's that, I will show you the derelict, which is over here. So this is the Terralic. Um And then, basically, you just need one of those 
So you just need basically what goes here is you make one of the keys for the, the extra specific mission. You can equip one of those other so like a derelict exterminate key. I have one so I can do one of these missions. Then you would equip one of those dragon keys. Look for the it'll be a vault. There's four different keys, so you want to do this with a team. And then one of the, you guys will open that vault. You will all get each one of them. You will go in, get the mod. And then you'll just leave, and that's how you get my, the, that's how the derelict missions work. I told you how the void mission works, and I believe that's all I wanted to go through. Yeah, I believe that's all. Oh, I wanted to show you the, so the junctions are basically ways of making sure that before all this stuff was grind filled, but these are basically ways of making sure that at certain points you that players get what they need which I think is really neat and really good um, and then basically how you complete them is you do these three missions you go there and you'll beat uh, you beat an enemy you do that you open the junction and you'll be able to not only get you get those rewards but you'll actually progress and go to higher level missions in different planets um, there are actually where the other um, kind of looking bazaars, but they're not called bazaars. What are they called? Relays. Um, where a guy named Brock, Brock, forget it. Basically, he's a void relic trader. He'll come every other week. He'll sell, you can sell prime, your prime parts and your rare weapons to him. He'll give you a certain kind of credit called ducats and then he'll have also certain items you can buy with the ducats whether it's old old weapons or skins or, uh, that may have not either new skins and weapons or maybe really hard to find mods or old weapons that they don't you don't have anymore because they're from old quests or event that you can't get so you can go there that's also where you do your syndicates. You can also do that to go to get your for your PvE rewards as well. Um, so that's that. So let's do a mission. So I'm going to do an easy one. Uh, let's see. How is there an ex so we'll do an exterminate mission. So, oh, and then you can actually, and I didn't show that, but at the top left, you can actually, you don't have to go with people. You can either do solo, friends only, invite, or, and I chose public. Cool thing is, you can move your ship during that. So. This is true. So then you have these crates you can find. They have weapons. They have weapons. They have ammo and other resources you can drop. So right there you saw what, why he turned orange was Helios was scanning him like he is now. So you can do it like that or you can do it manually. And the way you do it is you press Q. That'll bring up your inventory. And you can, and then you would just select the codex. You would right click, and then you would left left click and hold the scan them. Now, something I've noticed, and I don't know if this is a bug or is this in purpose, but you can, if you scan, like if I were to scan him before, let's see if I can do it. No, I wasn't able to. If I scan him before Helios does, we can get two scans on him. So, and you need to do 20 scans. So that, that quicks it up, quickens the pace quite nicely. I did a low level mission, so I don't have to worry about dying. But you can get revived in a mission uh, four times by yourself, or your partners can come and revive you as well. The reason I'm standing here is because you can find these little resource form formations around the different areas and different maps. The reason that's good is because 
what that allows once again what that allows is to take the loot from the loot cave that also allows that allows basically basically D to reward you if you do some explanation instead of because a lot of times what would happen if you did exploration you find a le neat little area and then you'd be like oh there's nothing here so I kinda wasted my time now what that what those allow them to do is basically even if ever so slightly reward players for doing exploration um, so I really like that and then as you can see I'm just going through my different powers I didn't go through the powers for Loki personally but you probably if you're paying attention you can go back and you can read them I don't know if actually the alert does anything uh, I know on exterminate missions it doesn't but I don't know in general if it actually increases the number of enemies that pop up I have a feeling it was supposed it's supposed to but I don't know if they ever have a fix that I have a feeling like at one time it did but then I don't know if they made it so it doesn't or if it just doesn't I just haven't noticed for whatever reason. Oh, another thing I should have showed. You can't actually, there's no knee high walls where you can uh, go behind. The enemies can, you can. Uh, you can actually hack different things. This is a Ganeo version of doing it. There's uh, corpus ones that are different. And then invested just kind of. It's the infested ones are random depending on what what map you're on. Uh, oh yeah, that makes that I'm glad I brought that up. And the invasions you can't support the infested, which makes sense. So it just stays whoever happens to own that planet. And then, so I got a blueprint. I got mods shows us some nice stats. If I had if these weren't ranked, it would show me how much experience I got from the mission and then my standings and well I guess I was floating through the air for a little while and that's really it um, I did I'll show you two quick things and then I will actually wrap this up I know this has been a long video but I do thank you guys for being really patient with me and sticking with me through this Oh, I also didn't mention, so if you see in the bottom, the top right, that little symbol that's with, that has like a little, that says one hour, basically what that is, that's a resource, basically that makes it so I can get more resources, uh, you can buy those, either with ducats or plaid through the, through either Brock, Brock here. I can't say his name for some reason, basically the uh, exotic dealer that comes every other week or the market another way you get it is through basically every time you log in uh, you have a chance of getting a different reward and at certain milestones you'll get a reward like uh, either excuse me uh, a, a mod or something like that or a sigil so that's really cool so that's why that's there that other thing that says five that just means I have five weapons or five items in the arsenal that I need to that are ready that I can take uh, and then so public friends only invite only solo so I like I personally like doing solo that's just me I do a lot of solo for a frame and then you can actually everything I just showed you in the uh, actual little ship you can actually get to from here you actually don't actually need to walk you can just teleport over there but I thought I'd show you anyways I will show you the landing craft because you can place decorations there are different Operation? ones that I, and you can pause and it'll and it will let you know what they actually do and and then you can customize the in interior and the exterior and that's really about it guys so I hope you enjoyed this video 
And as always guys, my name is Benchel Templar591 and have a great day.